2021, the year that Rolex bought a photocopier and Breitling bought a time machine. Hi everyone and welcome to Shaluso and yes today we're taking a look at the new releases from Breitling and I should actually correct that intro because really Breitling didn't buy their time machine this year they bought it last year when they went back to the 80s to get the chronomat now they're continuing their little back to the future ride and going back to the 1940s with a new range of Breitling premieres now I've reviewed the Breitling premiere before on the channel it's an amazing amazing collection in general I love the vibe it has of it's just an all-out luxury chronograph you know it's not pretending to be sporty or to be a tool watch or anything it knows it's a luxury product make sure you check out that video if you want to see a little bit more about the premiere in general but today we're talking about three new additions to the collection that go right back to the 1940s the origins of the collection and that all feature really interesting callbacks to Breitling's history they're all chronographs which is probably obvious it's important to remember as well though that Breitling are the ones who invented in 1934 the layout of the modern chronograph that whole pusher at three o'clock pusher at four o'clock start stop reset that whole thing yeah breitling invented that they created the template in the same way that blancpain and rolex set the template for what a dive watch is breitling set the template for what a chronograph wristwatch was and i think that's extremely important to remember as we look at these references because all of them is celebrating the chronograph heritage that's built into the breitling brand without that we wouldn't have what we traditionally think of chronographs today. That default layout is on everything from Alange und Zene to the Zenith El Primero and everything in between. But let's start out with the first of these new models and that is the Breitling Premier 40. Now as the name suggests, it's a 40 millimeter version of the standard Breitling Premier, but with a few tricks beyond just that crazy pistachio colored dial. This features the Breitling B09, which is the manual version of the Breitling B01. It's otherwise pretty much identical However, ditching the automatic system means that you shave off about two millimeters from the overall case thickness, which makes this a much more streamlined watch combined with the smaller case size. It really harks back to those historical dimensions, obviously with a bit more of a modern twist, and it just makes it a more streamlined watch. It's a watch that you can wear even more as a formal watch if you want to. And of course it features a chronograph. In this case, it's a two register chronograph. They got rid of the date. So it really harks back to that original entry. And I love this as a start point because I really think Breitling needs to use more of the B09. For one thing, I've always believed that underneath the rotor, the B01, which is effectively the B09, looks much better. I think the rotor was always a bit of a letdown when it came to the B01. So by having a display case back with the B09, because normally with the B09 in like the AVI 765 and in a few other of its applications, they've been closed case backs. With this, you can see it, it's on display, no rotor in the way it can really shine and show how good Breitling is actually at making a pretty attractive movement. Next, we have the Premier Duograph. This is based on historical reference and features a split seconds chronograph. And again, the movement on this is based on the B09, so it's manual wind. This is so important because it recognizes also, I think that these watches are part of a collection. These aren't just your only watch necessarily. And when you have three days power reserve, on a manual wind watch, it doesn't mean necessarily that you need an automatic. In my own experience, for example, all of my watches are automatic, but I always end up having to wind them because I change them every two to three days anyway. So a 70 hour power reserve means that if you do change your watches relatively frequently, you'll have enough reserve for when you want to use it and you'd have to wind it anyway. And including the split seconds, it again brings to mind that notion of Breitling showing off what it is capable of. You know, I think a lot of the times Breitling gets a little bit frowned upon for their long dependence on the 7750, but in the last few years, they've really gone to great efforts to show what they're capable of making on a movement level. And I think really reaffirming how important they are to the notion of chronographs and something like a split second is one of the best advancements for a chronograph. It's one of the best ways of showcasing something a little bit more special than just your regular run in the mill chronograph. Next, I wanna mention one that wasn't actually part of Breitling's original webcast summit, but that should be noted, and that is the Breitling Premier Turbion for Bentley. It's a 25 piece limited edition, continuing on with Breitling's collaboration with Bentley. And of course, as the name suggests, it's a premiere with a big Turbion right there at 12 o'clock. And I think this is again, another interesting addition to the collection purely because 
it showcases Breitling, again, pushing the boundaries on a movement level, showing they are a movement maker, showing that they can make some of these higher complications, split seconds, now a tourbillon. With these new releases, they're really asserting their position, not just aesthetically with the styling from the 1940s, the different colors, but also from a movement perspective. Will they sell very many of these $52,000 watches? No, but that's why it's limited to 25 pieces, but it is still a mission statement on what they're capable of. And I think it gives us a good idea of the direction they're going to go. They're going to keep moving up market, but bringing substance behind it, not just increasing the price for the sake of it. And then the last release I'd like to highlight from the new Breitling models is the Premier Daytora. Again, another watch that was based on a historical reference. In this case, it's based on the Breitling reference 785 from 1942. Now, yes, I know what you're thinking. If you look at this and then you look at a Patek 5270P, these kind of look pretty similar. Now the 5070P is actually based on the design, which was from 1941. So yes, the original predecessor were only a year apart. But before you go calling homage, you need to consider a few things. For one thing, Breitling is very aware that they are not Patek. They didn't put a perpetual calendar in there, they put a complete calendar. They're not charging Patek money. They're not out there throwing on their own seal. It's just cost certified. What Breitling is doing is they're harking back to their history at a time where if you looked at watches at that period featuring complete calendars with chronographs, they would all share some pretty similar layouts because that's a lot of information to show. There's only so many different ways that you could show it back then. Now you have companies like Moser, which will strip down the dial of a perpetual calendar. So it looks almost like a three hander. There's a lot more options, but back then tons of watches look the same at that point as well. Tons of companies were also sharing dial manufacturers, sharing movement manufacturers, case manufacturers. So the fact that these two look similar is because they're both based on a period when watches weren't as physically differentiated. So it's important to understand the history before you start calling homage or copies. And then departing from that, this is objectively a good looking watch. The salmon dial is beautiful, as well as if you look at the rose gold version with the silver dial, again, another amazing example and something that you probably wouldn't mind spending that sort of money on because you'll get the quality. It's from a reliable brand and it just looks good. This is a superficial hobby for everyone to a certain degree. And you can't argue that it's a good looking watch, but even more interesting for me is the movement. For one thing, Breitling has finally come out with a rotor that actually looks good. I would love to see them using this rotor from the B25 on their regular B01 models, because I think it will open up the movement a lot more, show some of the good parts of that movement. And it looks much better finished when compared to the standard sort of satinized rotor that they have on the B01. But in addition to that, this is a brand new movement. The other movements we've discussed today have all been based on the B01, their manufacturer chronograph that they've been producing since 2009. This, however, is a brand new movement made in collaboration with Concepto, however, entirely to Breitling specifications. They had a lot of specifications in terms of having the date change be almost instantaneous, making sure it's reliable, making sure it's serviceable, making sure it's something that they could cover under their five year warranty. This is something that is so Breitling that it's worth them covering their warranty. And that focus on usability and reliability is so important to Breitling because all of these are usable watches. They're accessible sizes. They're available in steel as well as precious metal. They all feature hundred meters of water resistance. The ones that are based on the B01 are tank tough, as I'm sure will be the ones with the B25 movement. However, they're all timeless. They're all designs that look amazing today, as amazing as they did back in the 1940s where they originated. They're based on real history, not made up history and nostalgia. And they're a celebration of what Breitling has always been known for, which is their chronographs. So I think this is a knockout of the park. I really love what they've done with this collection. I like the way that they were presented and it's good knowing that most likely these aren't going to be the last Breitling releases we have for 2021 because last year we got three releases in this format over the course of 2020. This is just the first one. I'm expecting another one, probably maybe mid year and then another one in the third or fourth quarter of the year to round out Breitling's collection. I'd love to see them produce either a perpetual calendar, which is what I wanted to see originally this year. I thought that would have looked great in the premier collection, or if not, maybe they can bring it back in the Navitimer collection. There is precedent for a Breitling Navitimer with a perpetual calendar. Back then it was based on a 7750. I think it'd be great to see a B01 based perpetual calendar from Breitling in the Navitimer range, if not in the premier range as well. I think both of those collections are ripe for at least variations. And it'd be great to see Breitling keep pushing further in going up market with these new complications. But let me know in the comments below, what do you think of these new releases? What do you think of the way they were released? 
What do you think of the inspiration they took? I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you like this video, make sure you like it and share it. If you want to see more pictures and infographics as featured throughout this video and all my others, make sure you follow me on Instagram at Shaluso. And if you want to see more watch videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell as well so you know when the next video comes out. In any case, thanks for watching this video and we'll catch you on the next one.